Hello, and welcome to another virtual lesson. Today we're going to be talking about the particle theory of matter. Please make sure you have your reading sheet with you so you can follow along. Let's take a look. Why do different substances have such different properties? Why is a rock hard, and why does jello jiggle? Why can you put your hand through a stream of water, but not through a brick wall? What is different about each of these objects, and why do they behave the way that they do? To answer these questions, we need to explore the particle theory. The particle theory states three major things about matter. Now, those may be dumb questions. Well, why can't you stick your hand through a brick wall? Because it's hard. Well, yeah, but, but why? Why is jello jiggly? What, what is it about that allows it to be jiggly? Why isn't jello harder? Why aren't bricks and rocks all jiggly? Uh, what caused them to be the way that they are? So we're gonna look at the particle theory, and it says three things. The first is, all matter is made up of tiny particles atoms and molecules, and there are always spaces between them. So all matter, everything, anything that has mass, weight, and takes up space in our universe is matter. Basically everything except for energy, because energy doesn't really take up space or have weight. You can't, oh, I got a big heavy bucket of sound here, oh, look out, or, you know, oh, I'm, you know, this, this is so much electricity, I can't hold it all, it's getting too heavy for me. It doesn't work out like that. And when we say atoms and molecules, we mean the things that kind of make up everything. So atoms are the building blocks of all things. You know the periodic table, all those things? Those are atoms. We then use atoms to make molecules. So molecules are made up of several different atoms, uh, and, and that makes up everything in our known universe. So everything is made up of these particles, and there is always space between them. Sometimes a little bit of space, sometimes a lot of space. But the bottom line is that they never really touch, okay? There's always space between them. Let's look at the second point. The particles are always moving. The more energy they have, the faster they move. This energy is often in the form of heat. So these particles that make up you, me, this table, everything, are always moving. Sometimes they're moving just a little tiny bit, just vibrating back and forth ever so slightly. Sometimes they're flying all over the place and going crazy. But the more energy they have, often in the form of heat, you heat up something, you add energy to it, those particles begin to move faster and faster and faster. Okay, so less energy means slower, more energy means faster. So think about that right now. This table is made up of all sorts of particles, billions if not hundreds of trillions of them, that are all vibrating with spaces between them. But the space between them is so small that it appears to be solid and we can't put our hand through it. Here's point number three. Particles are attracted to each other. Uh, the neutrons are attracted to protons. The stronger the attractive forces, the closer they get, and the harder they are to separate. That's why I can't put my hand through this table. That's why I can't put my hand through that brick wall or that rock. It's hard because the particles are attracted to each other, and it takes a lot of force to split them apart. Y you can do it, but think of the force that would be required to karate chop this table as compared to karate chop a brick of jello. It's not as much because the particles are less attracted to each other or they're slightly further apart. So the greater the attractive forces, the closer they are together. But again, they never touch. They're never linking together. The particles still stay separate. Think, if you think back to grade six when you talked about electricity, you talked about the electrons that are going around them. And those electrons literally create a force field that surrounds those, uh, those electro, uh, those, uh, atoms or molecules, and they kind of bounce off each other, so things don't ever really touch. So let's recap. All matter is made up of tiny particles, and there's always spaces between them. These particles are always moving. More energy equals faster movement. And the particles are attracted to each other. The closer they are, the more attracted to each other they are, and uh, the harder, a subject, uh, harder it is to pull them apart. Let's look at the next paragraph. The particle theory of matter can also be used to explain the different states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Now, it seems every day we seem to be adding a new state of matter, but we're just going to stick with these for right now. As heat energy is added to matter, the particles vibrate faster and faster until they begin to bump into each other. Well, not really bump into each other, but those electromagnetic fields that surround them kind of bump off each other. 
Eventually, they bump each other so hard that they break the attractive forces that are holding them in place and move further apart. However, these particles never actually touch because they are repelled by the electromagnetic field around them created by electrons. So, let's say we have a solid and we start to add heat energy to those solids. They begin to vibrate faster and faster. They be, uh, eventually they start to bump into each other harder and harder. Kind of imagine you're standing almost shoulder to shoulder with people and you kind of nudge them. It's not going to do much. But if you hit them with more and more force, they're going to separate and move away from you. The exact same thing happens with a solid. You, as you add energy, the particles move faster and faster and faster, hit each other harder and harder and harder, bounce farther and farther apart until they break those strong attractive forces that are holding them together and move into weaker attractive forces. So they're still attracted to each other, but they can kind of slip around each other uh, that, and become a liquid. A solid becomes a liquid. It melts. Now let's keep adding heat energy to that liquid. The particles keep moving faster and faster and faster. They hit each other harder. They spread further and further apart until they break the weak attractive forces that are holding them in place and move to very, very weak attractive forces and fly all over the place. That liquid becomes a gas. It just evaporated. So now those uh, have so much energy, they're flying all over the place. The attractive forces between them are virtually non-existent. Let's look at the diagram at the bottom. We're starting with solids, and as you notice, as we go from solid to liquid to gas, we're increasing the heat energy that we're adding. In a solid, the molecules that make up a solid are arranged in regular repeating patterns. They're held firmly in place, but can vibrate within a limited area. So that's the neat thing about solids. The particles aren't just kind of randomly arranged, they're in regular repeating patterns patterns. Some repeat very simply, some repeat in a very, very complex way. But the particles are still moving, but they're not flying all around. They're locked into a rigid position and vibrating just a little bit. In a liquid, the molecules that make up a liquid flow easily around one another. They're kept from flying apart by attractive forces between them. Liquids assume the shapes of their containers. So unlike a solid, liquids can't really keep their shape. Yeah, there are thicker liquids and there are thinner liquids, uh, but they kind of they will take the shape of their container because the particles can't really hold together. There is some, there are some still attractive forces between them though. In a gas, the molecules that make up a gas fly in all directions at great speeds. They are so far apart that the attractive forces between them are insignificant. So we're always surrounded by a gas. We're at the bottom of an ocean of air, surrounded continually by these particles. But we're never really hindered by moving around by these particles because the attractive forces between them are, you know, aren't very strong. It's easy to run down the street like, oh, look at me, look at me, chop through the air, split apart that matter, look at me, go, I can separate those air particles, hey, I got it. It's not very hard because the attractive forces aren't you know, uh, uh, very strong. Now imagine running through water. Now let's assume your feet have a good grip on the ground. It takes uh, 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 more force to run through that water because the board particles are a little more attracted to each other, assuming that you have strong grip with your feet, you're not slipping at the bottom of the pool. Uh, it takes more force to separate them. Uh, now imagine trying to run through a solid brick wall. It's possible to break that brick wall, it's possible to separate those particles, but it requires a great deal more energy and force to do so because the attractive forces are so strong. And that's the particle theory of matter. To recap one last time, all matter is made up of tiny particles, atoms and molecules, and the, there is always space between them. They never touch. The particles are always moving. The more energy they have, the faster they move and the particles are attractive to, attracted to each other. Uh, the neutrons are attracted to protons. Uh, the stronger the attractive force, the closer they get. Thanks for watching.